Hi folks, welcome to Sawtooth Tactical. I'm George, and this is the channel where we're all about firearms and freedom. Today's video is going to be all about upgrading your AR-15 rifle. So, this was the very first AR-15 I ever got. When I got it, it was, you know, it's the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2. Definitely an entry-level rifle, but also a very quality piece of hardware. So, any of you that know about AR-15s, know about the M&P Sport 2. Uh, it, this was the optics ready version, which came with a little Picatinny gas block here. Um, no optic or anything like that. It, uh, when I got it, it had this standard plastic handguard, um, which doesn't even have heat shields inside. Not something that you can really attach anything to very easily. Um, at the time, I didn't really know that I needed to attach anything to it. I was just excited to get an AR-15. Like I said, it was my first one. Had the A2 pistol grip, which uh, I've come to realize is not that ergonomic. You got this little notch here sticking out that goes between your ring finger and your middle finger. Didn't really bug me so much. The main thing for me was the, uh, the angle that it was at. Um, I like more of an up and down angle. But I had to find that out for myself. Came with the A2 birdcage flash hider on the muzzle. Um, this thing works just fine for, you know, hiding flash, what it's called. But uh, I realized that I could upgrade that as well. In fact, I basically upgraded everything on this rifle. So, original barrel nut. Pretty beat up because when I went to take this off, I didn't have the correct tools. And uh, it took a lot of work to get that off. This was the second handguard I had on this AR, and the first actual upgrade I made. Um, this was a drop-in handguard. Um, what is it? The UTG Pro two-piece. It. Uh, I got this before I really knew a whole lot about what I was doing, um, and I was really happy with it at first. You know, put on the Magpul angled foregrip. Um, they had Picatinny across the top for mounting stuff. Um, all that, so I thought it was pretty sweet, but it does have a proprietary way of mounting a pick rail on it, um, which I found was not so awesome. Um, <laughs> I couldn't find more Picatinny rails anywhere. I ordered a bunch of different ones. None of them mounted on this, including the UTG one that I thought was supposed to be for this handyard. Anyway, I digress. Um, came with the mill spec buttstock. Nothing really so awesome about this. It is adjustable, six position, but, um, you know, pretty hard back here. Not super ergonomic for getting a good cheek weld, um, and, you know, it looks pretty dang basic. Bill Speck charging handle, which, um, <laughs> I think I'm spoiled now. I really dislike these charging handles. You know, it's got the one latch on the one side. It's pretty small, not super easy to actuate. Um, and then mill spec trigger group here. So by showing you what I've replaced, you have a pretty good idea of what I've replaced. So let's start with where I started. Um, like I said, the first thing I did, I replaced that handguard. Um, it didn't take me long of owning the rifle with this to realize that shooting it like this not the most uh, comfortable way of shooting. Um, so I got this, I put it on. I was really happy with it at first. You had extended my Picatinny rail from the top of the upper receiver to about here and actually matched up with the, uh, the little pick rail on top of the, um, <laughs> of the gas block, sorry. Um, so, you know, I got some iron sights for it. They're not on the table here. I've since given them to a friend. Um, they were polymer iron sights. I had one on top of that gas block, uh, which as you guys know, gas block gets pretty hot. So um, not really the best thing to put a polymer sight on, but I was trying to get the largest sight radius I could at the time. So I had one here and here. Now that polymer rear sight was a pretty wide one, um, and it made it really hard to actuate this charging handle. So, 
I got a nice ambidextrous charging handle. This is Gray Badger Firearms is where I got this from. Um, and I love it. It, uh, I mean, it's just super easy from either side. Um, as you can see from what I'm doing there, I also have the Magpul Bad Lever. Makes it very, very easy to uh, manipulate your bolt. Um, if you don't have a magazine in, push this up, lock your bolt back, push it down with your trigger finger, and you're right back on the trigger immediately. So if you're doing a quick, you know, um, a quick reload, I'm not gonna do it with this full mag, but you know, you have your bolt back, shove in your fresh mag, hit that, you know, your hand goes forward and you're back on the trigger immediately. I know it seems like a small thing, um, and in fact, I got one for this AR first, but I liked it so much, I got it for this one as well. But anyway, let's get back to where I started here. So when I bought the rifle, first thing I got, the day I got it, was the Sig Romeo 5 Red Dot. <clears throat> the guys at the gun store where I bought this made me a deal on it. Um, like I said, it was optics ready, which, you know, in the industry means it doesn't come with any sights. <laughs> um, so that helped. I put this on. I was able to go shooting that day. Um, loved the rifle the way it was. Very quickly, I realized, wow, I realized it was time to start making some upgrades. And, uh, and that actually became a really fun part of AR-15 ownership is customizing it, making it yours, making it the way you want it to be and what works best for you. And I feel like I've gotten there with this. It's taken quite a while though. Um, but I do feel like I've gotten there now. So, had the red dot, was able to shoot it. Um, really fine, you know. Obviously, it's uh, more accurate than, than any of my pistols. Um, the 1911, pretty dang accurate for a pistol. Rifle, still more accurate. <laughs> So, um, so I had the red dot on there. Next thing, like I said, I did was this handguard. And, uh, I was pretty happy with it for a while. Um, actually for a long time. And I did some other things while I had that handguard on. I think the next thing I did was this buttstock. This is the, uh, Mission First Tactical, uh, Minimalist Buttstock. I started seeing these on some other rifles and I really liked the way they looked. Um, did a little research, seemed like people were really happy with them, so I got it and I have been really happy with it. Like I said, I do love the way it looks. Um, it's got a QD point on it. Also some other spots that you can run a sling through if you want. Um, six position adjustable, you know, it, uh, I like it a lot. Um, and it was a, bit, a lot better than this one. Um, in terms of just being comfortable, being ergonomic, but also, you know, these kind of rattle around. This one moves a little bit, but not much. So, got that. Um, I believe the next thing I did, so I had this rail. I got a cheap light from Amazon that I mounted to this piece of Picatinny right here. Um, I had a, a vertical foregrip. I believe it was UTG also, maybe. Um, <laughs> it was like a five position adjustable one. At the time, I thought that would be a cool thing. Realized it wasn't really for one. It was too long. Didn't look great on the rifle. Um, but also, no one holds those like a broomstick, you know, when you're shooting. I realized that pretty quick. Um, and because it was adjustable back and forth, it was kind of loose, uh, which isn't great also. But I ran the rifle that way for a while. I had that light on it. I had the tape switch, the pressure switch from that light running down that vertical foregrip so I could you know, actuate it with uh, these fingers. Um, it worked for a while, but it was just kind of, uh, it was kind of annoying. In fact, I, like, I took the light off most of the time that I went to the range. Um, and I realized that that wasn't optimal. Um, so eventually here, what I did, actually first, before I did that, got the Mission First Tactical Pistol Grip here. I really like their buttstock, got their pistol grip, 
and I, and I love it, honestly. Um, I've got the Magpul MOE on this one. I like this Mission First Tactical much better. It's a, it's kind of a thick boy. It's, it's really easy to get a nice high grip on. Um, it's got a much more vertical angle to it, which I like. I feel like you just have way better control over the rifle that way. It's more comfortable to shoot. Um, I love this. Um, it does come with like a tab right here that's supposed to take up space, you know, between your trigger guard and the pistol grip. I had to cut that tab off um, because the M&P Sport 2 comes with an integrated trigger guard, not like uh, this one or a lot of other ARs. So I've cut that tab off. It installed fairly easily. Um, and I, I really do enjoy it. So Mission First Tactical, I think they make great stuff. I've also, most of my mags are P-Mags, Magpul. I do have a Mission First Tactical magazine too that I use. Never had an issue with it. I think they make fantastic stuff. So anyway, after I did that, so yeah, Mission First Tactical stuff, awesome. Um, pretty quickly I realized I wanted to make this into a real fighting rifle, a real AR, like the ones I was seeing that look so good. Um, so went with the 15 inch Aero Precision uh, Atlas R1 handguard. That was, at the time, you know, that was my biggest upgrade. I was really excited about it. Got an Aero Precision um, low profile gas block because obviously you can't put that handguard over this big thing. So got the low profile gas block, pulled off this handguard, worked for like three days to get this god dang barrel nut off of here. <laughs> Finally got it off, <clears throat> like I said, didn't have the correct tools, um, but I got that done, put this handguard on, got it timed right, everything. It has a uh, really great attachment method to their proprietary barrel net. Um, super solid, won't move anywhere, locked into your upper receiver. Looks cool as hell, but also, you know, it's very, very practical. Um, so for one thing, being this long, you can really get a nice reach out on here with your support hand. You know, which I like shooting it this way, um, and I do a lot of the time. But I also like having this where it is not quite so far out there. That way I kind of have a couple options. I can use this to pull it back into my, my shoulder. Or I can really get out here and drive the rifle, depending what kind of shooting I'm doing. So anyway, got this. Immediately got the uh, the Magpul VFG, the vertical foregrip. Um, it's kind of smaller than like the other one I had, smaller even than this big angled foregrip. And uh, I really like it. I use it mostly kind of as a hand stop here. Like I said, to pull it into myself, or sometimes kind of with like three or four fingers on it, but still thumb over bore. Um, and it's super comfortable. Super easy to manipulate the whole rifle with it that way. I, I like it a lot. So it finally started looking like the rifle I wanted at that point and kind of like the way it looks now. Um, once I got those on, I decided to upgrade the light. You know, I, I had that cheap Amazon light I was talking about. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the cable on that light between the light and the tape switch was like super long. So I had all this cable, I was trying to zip tie to it and make it kind of hide it, wrap it around the freaking mounting system. And it just looked cheesy. And I was like, man, like I've got this rifle looking pretty sweet now. I can't have this freaking cheesy cable all over the place. Got this Olight, um, it was like 130 bucks. It is the, the Odin Mini. Um, I believe it's like a thousand lumens or 1200 lumens thing is crazy bright. Uh, I've accidentally, you know, pointed it in the mirror and turned it on before and it will blind you. Um, <laughs> it will absolutely blind you, which is good. You know, if there's a, if there's a bad guy breaking in or something, I got no problem blinding that guy. Um, it's pretty cool the way it works. Very simple. So the tape switch here, 
you know, mounts right onto your Picatinny. The light itself has a mount for M-Lock, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to have to put a piece of rail section and then mount it to that like I did with the other one. I wanted it to be simple, clean, and that's exactly what it is. So mounts to M-Lock, you can use just, you know, the little clicky in the back of the light. I like the tape switch, the pressure switch, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you hold it, it's momentary on. If you click it, it stays on and click off. So it doesn't have like multiple buttons or anything like that. Super simple. Click it on or hold it on and let off when you don't want light. Um, which I think, you know, as far as tactical use, that's kind of perfect. You know, if you're trying to clear your house, see what's, you know, going on. I know a lot of people talk about giving your position away or something. I'm not super concerned about that. My house isn't huge. Um, there's only two points of entry someone could come in. And if it's nighttime, I want to light them up. I want to be able to see them, make sure that that's something that I actually want to shoot at or, you know, versus something I don't want to shoot at. Um, so I think a light is very important. As you can see, I've got a light on this rifle. I've got a light on my AR pistol. I've also got a light on my bedside gun, which is the uh, m and M2.0 full-size 9mm West Smith & Wesson. Um, light's very important in my opinion when it comes to home defense. Obviously, big fan of the Smith & Wesson. Got the m and pistol, m and rifle. Um, Smith & Wesson makes fantastic stuff. So anyway, this light um, was a <laughs> huge upgrade over the old one. After that, I decided I needed to upgrade the sights as well. Um, I believe backup iron sights are important. I don't use them super often. Um, these are SIG iron sights. <laughs> they were almost as, actually they were as expensive as this optic was. Um, but I believe they are important. I have them zeroed. Most of the time when I go shooting at the range, I'm not using them because the red dot is just so easy and intuitive and accurate. But just in case something, you know, the red dot, something happened to it, the batteries died. In that moment, you actually need the rifle. I believe it's important to have backup iron sights. Um, as far as that kind of situation happening, I think it's probably pretty unlikely. The uh, This red dot, you know, it's got the, the shake awake technology or whatever, where um, the battery shuts off after a certain number of hours of not being in use. But the moment you pick it up, the moment it moves at all, it's it's on. So honestly, I've never looked through it and not seen a red dot because as soon as you move it, the dot is on. Um, I think they say it's a 50,000 hour battery life, which is like five years, something ridiculous like that. So I don't foresee having an issue with it. But I also, you know, I think having backup iron sights just smart, just in case. Um, they're not the spring up kind. You know, you actually have to pull them up. But they flip up super easy. They're steel, they're not polymer. I like that about them. They're super solid. Um, obviously, they hold zero. They're SIG, same as the red dot. I like SIG optics, SIG. SIG just makes fantastic gear. Um, fantastic firearms as well. Uh, so let's see from there. Where do we go? So I got this sling <laughs> Another thing I went through many different iterations on um, Tried a single point sling at first Had like a little sling attachment, you know, hooked to the top of the Picatinny rail hung there um, It was too long It flopped all over the place. Wasn't super stoked about that Got a two-point sling that was kind of a cheapy you know, another like Amazon thing, which I've definitely learned my lesson on that kind of stuff. Now I buy quality gear, but you know, had to learn my lesson. Had that for a little while too. It wasn't adjustable, whatever. I mean, it kind of worked. When I found this sling, this is the one that made all the difference and it's the one I run on both of my ARs. So, the cool thing about this one is it's got this thing here. So. You can pull it up tight to yourself, holds the rifle really nice and, uh, you know, tight to yourself. Pull this out as quick as you want to and you're loose, you can move it around. 
you know, switch shoulders, whatever you need to do. Pull this back up, tighten it back down. It's, it's pretty sweet. Um, and it's quality, you know, quality, uh, whatever you call that stuff. I like it. I wrote it on both my ARs. Um, after that, <laughs> next thing was the trigger group upgrade. I, uh, I was running the mill spec trigger on this, running the mill spec trigger on this, and uh, I got really excited about binary triggers. Did a lot of research, bought the Fostec Echo AR2 binary trigger, put that in my AR pistol. Um, <laughs> dude, the thing is super fun. Um, but then all of a sudden, you know, I felt like I needed to upgrade the trigger on my rifle. So I uh, started looking, I decided, you know, didn't need a binary trigger on both guns. Um, so I wanted to find one that was going to be, you know, smooth, crisp, clean, clean break, light trigger pull. Did a lot of research, um, and then I found one from Palmetto State Armory. It's three and a half pound match grade trigger, uh, skeletonized, straight trigger shoe. <laughs> uh, I really like the way it looks, for one thing. But man, the way it shoots, it's a night and day difference from the mil-spec trigger. I think the mil-spec trigger on this gun broke at like six, six and a half pounds or something like that. Um, it didn't really have a lot of take up or slow, you know, it was a decent mil-spec trigger for sure. But, uh, but this one, it's, it is, it's a night and day difference. So, you know, safety off. Gun is clear. Um, I don't know if you can see from this, but the tiniest bit of movement and it breaks like glass. Bolt cycles. That's the reset. Audible, tactile, and uh, short, you know. Fantastic trigger. Um, makes a huge difference as far as accuracy goes. But also follow-up shots, um, it's, it's very quick. One thing I start realizing though again, is that every time you upgrade something, you realize something else needs to be upgraded, it seems like. So um, I realized I could shoot much quicker on the trigger, but um, as far as accuracy goes, you know, I can see the dot moving around. You know, 5.56, 223, not a super heavy hitter as far as recoil goes, um, but you know, when there's things you can do about it, you might as well. So I got this Strike Industries J Comp Gen 2 uh, muzzle brake comp, whatever you want to call it. It is a muzzle brake, three chamber, um, two like vertical chambers and a horizontal one. And uh, you know, things kind of long. Um, I think it looks, you know, pretty cool though. And man, it made a difference. First time I took it out shooting, it's like there's no recoil anymore. You know, you can feel the gun like thump or whatever, um, but it doesn't move. Your dot stays right on target. You can pull the trigger as fast as you can and uh, stay on target very, very easily. In fact, since I got this, I've ordered a uh, muzzle brake comp for this gun as well. Not the same one, I wanted to try out something different. Um, for one, this thing, you know, it's very concussive and it's very loud. It's on a 16 inch barrel on this one. This is an 11.5, um, so I didn't really want that giant explosion happening right in front of my face. Um, but, you know, running the echo trigger, when you're running it fast, that dot is bouncing around. I don't care how, you know, hard you hold that thing into your shoulder or how good your technique is, like, it moves around a bit. Um, so I ordered the Strike Industries King Comp for that one. It's supposed to have, you know, specially angled ports to uh, reduce like side blast concussion. So we'll see how it goes. It should be here later this week. I'll do a video about that as well. Um, but yeah, so I think that was the most recent upgrade to this thing. I believe I've gone over everything. Uh, so next thing we're doing, we're going to take this to the range today. We're going to shoot it. Uh, you'll see how it runs. <laughs> I mean, this rifle runs flawless. Um, the only thing I've ever had an issue with it at all was uh, with this ammo right here. So, right here I am holding six rounds 
of Federal 556 frangible ammunition. Now, I bought this frangible ammo um, because I generally shoot at steel targets, and 556 out of the 16 inch barrel does cause some pitting in my target. <clears throat> So I saw this on the shelf and I was like, sweet, you know. Ran this for a while. I mean, I went through hundreds of rounds of this stuff, but out of two different boxes of it, I had these six rounds. One box, it was four rounds, like the first four rounds out of that box. And then a week later, ran some more of the same ammo and two more rounds do the same thing. Um, where it didn't feed properly. I'm not sure if the cases on these are not as strong or something. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it's like bent that way and it's uh, it's dented at the shoulder there. So, or at the neck, whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to buy this ammo anymore. Um, I like Federal for the most part. Most of the ammo I've run from them has been just fine. Um, and most of this has too. I've run hundreds of rounds of it, but uh, to have six failures, all the same kind of ammo, um, and I've had no other failures in the gun. Just not super stoked on that ammo. Um, not as reliable as you'd like it to be. But anyway, I think that's just about all I have to say about this AR. Um, Smith & Wesson make a fantastic AR-15. So if you're like me, you know, and you're going to get your first AR, I do recommend it. Even though I've put as much money into this gun as the gun itself cost when I bought it um, to get it to the point where it is now. And you can definitely buy rifles with a lot of these features without having to do all the work yourself. Um, but I think there's advantages to doing it this way. I've really gotten to know my AR and the AR platform in general through replacing everything, you know, barrel nuts, handguards, trigger groups. You know, everything. I mean, the only things that's original on this now are the upper and lower receiver, bulk carrier group, and the barrel. And those things are quality components. They're Smith & Wesson. Can't complain about it one bit. I guess and the buffer, buffer tube assembly as well. Um, Smith & Wesson makes fantastic firearms. So I, I think this was a great way to go. I was able to make the rifle exactly the way I wanted it. Um, and I, I have a good quality rifle underneath all this stuff. And, you know, now it's like high speed, low drag. It's, it's a, dude, I mean, it's a beautiful AR-15. And it's a lot of fun to shoot, and I'm proud of it. Um, and I enjoy owning it. So uh, let's go to the range and go shoot this thing. And again, from Sawtooth Tactical, remember, stay strapped or get clapped. Thanks. Hi, I'm George for Sawtooth Tactical. Today we're out here shooting the uh, Smith & Wesson m &P that I've been talking about. Um, Strike Industries muscle, bleh, muzzle brake. We got the Palmetto State Armory trigger. Aero Precision 15 inch M-Lock handguard. SIG Romeo 5. Mission First Tactical everything. <laughs> so here we go, let's get some shots. So since we're out here shooting the Smith & Wesson M&P rifle, I figured we might as well shoot the Smith & Wesson M&P pistol today too. This is the M2.0 9mm, 4.25 inch barrel. It's, uh, it's my favorite 9mm pistol that I own. So here we go. fun pistol to shoot. <laughs> 